live from KSAT 12. The Night Beat starts right now. A year ago, a man was killed in a road rage shooting here on the southeast side. Now, police have arrested a second person and charged him with murder. Coming up, why the victim's family says that isn't enough. But first, we want to begin with our forecast. We know many of you are making plans for New Year's Eve. Let's check in with Justin to see what it's going to look like outside. Well, compared to years past, this is going to be a good New Year's Eve. We're going to see some good weather this weekend. It was already a beautiful day today. Uh, let's take a look at the time lapse here with our almanac. And yeah, we have clear skies. It's turned into a nice night. A little chilly out there. Temperatures are in the 40s now. But we made it up to 63 today after a morning low of 35. This is pretty average. A little cooler than average, I suppose, for the morning low. We're going to be right back there again tomorrow morning. Very similar looking day other than... The afternoon highs will be a little bit warmer. We're at 43 right now, 43 in Converse, uh, 30s in the Hill Country, and there is a decent chance at a freeze for those in the Hill Country. Even here in San Antonio, like yesterday morning, or this morning, I should say, uh, we're going to get close. 35 here in San Antonio. A few places may touch freezing uh, for a little while tomorrow morning. We're going to talk more about that New Year's Eve forecast and some rain chances, too, coming up next week here in just a few minutes. RJ? All right, thank you very much, Justin. Well, one year after a man was shot and killed in a road rage incident, tonight San Antonio police now have a second suspect. 21-year-old Alberto Aguirre was arrested this week on a murder charge. The victim family tells the night team's Daniela Ibarra that they're grateful for the arrest, but says that she's now worried for her safety. It was so hard. I miss him so much. I miss his laugh. I, I miss his jokes. I just miss him. Joanne Quiroga is starting the second year without her dad, 49-year-old Ines Quiroga. He would always be like, Echale ganas, mijita. And I don't have that anymore, and it sucks because I've had so many hard days since that day. That December day is one Joanne and her Aunt Sara want to forget, but can't. It's not the same. It's not the same without him. The stretch of Goliad near 410 is still hard for Joanne to drive by. She was here with her dad last year when he was killed in a road rage incident. I know what my dad, you know, getting off the car and confronting them was bad too, but what they did was worse because yes. my dad was not armed. Nearly two weeks after the shooting, police arrested 21-year-old Joe Longoria and charged him with murder. And this week, they caught the second murder suspect, 21-year-old Alberto Aguirre. Court records show both men posted bond and are on house arrest. Why are they you know, in house arrest when they should be locked up. That's why Sada says she fears for Joanne's safety. And I'm scared for her because they're, already, I mean, they're out. They can show up any, any minute. They want peace of mind and justice for Quirogas. I feel like justice would look like them being incarcerated. They killed a man yeah. in cold blood. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Well, today marks one week since Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra disappeared. This is security video you're seeing right here, released yesterday by San Antonio police in their case. Both of them were found dead along with their unborn child. Officers are calling the people that you see in this video, quote, people of interest. Police say both Soto and Guerra were shot in the head. Police say that if you know anything about that dark pickup truck there with a bed cover or the people in this video, Make sure to call Homicide Detectives. Their number is 210-207-7674. Remember, you can remain anonymous. Well, tonight, a young woman is dead, and San Antonio police say it's at the hands of her ex-boyfriend. Officers say the victim went to her ex's apartment off Vista Drive there near San Pedro Avenue to pick up her things when she got into a fight with her ex's new girlfriend who was there. That's when police say the ex-boyfriend got a gun and shot her. She died at the scene. 27-year-old Ryan Walser is now charged with murder. And a scary scene for a family of five escaping a fire at their home in Converse. You see that video right there. It happened just before one this morning on Copper Cove near Loop 1604. Crews say that smoke was shooting out of the two-story home when they arrived. Three adults, two children, and a dog all fortunately made it out safely. Right now, they're getting help from the Red Cross. It's still unclear what sparked those flames. A father and son accused of ripping off dozens of people. Sheriff Javier Salazar says 57-year-old Miguel Angel Cuer Lopez and his son, 32-year-old Miguel Angel Cuer Martinez, you see him behind me, were running a fake business promising 
to build food trucks. According to Sheriff Salazar, they were just taking money and the payments from the victims and didn't do any of the work. Salazar says the, vic the father and son scammed at least 28 people and stole about $186,000 in total. They are both facing felony theft charges. Now, the father is under arrest, but deputies are still looking for the son. Salazar says that he may be in Mexico right now. The sheriff's office is asking for any more potential victims to come forward and give them a call. As the crisis continues at our southern border, local volunteers are doing what they can to help migrants here in San Antonio. In San Antonio, Young children especially have had a very difficult time. That's why LULAC and other volunteers are putting together what they're calling dignity bags for children at the Migrant Resource Center. It's essentially a care package filled with items like baby wipes and chapstick. Some come with small toys and coloring books. And it's small things like these that mean the world to these kids who are going through some tough times. They're really close. They're Velcro to their caregiver. I mean, their their parent. They're scared. And LULEC is asking for, of course, monetary donations, but also hygiene items. If you're interested in helping, we'll have a list of those items that needed and who to call on our website. You can find that at ksat.com. Moving on to the war in Ukraine, and it's taking yet another deadly turn. Russia is launching its largest attack since the fighting began nearly two years ago. ABC's Tim Pulliam reports. The war in Ukraine hitting a new low. Russia delivering its largest attack since its nonstop invasion, sending residents running for their lives. Dozens killed and more than 100 injured. Over 100 missiles and drones simultaneously striking six cities in an hours long attack. Ukraine says it was able to intercept most. Some places took direct hits. From a shopping mall in flames to smoke billowing from this apartment building fully engulfed. And this maternity hospital where more than a dozen women were about to give birth now ruined. Crews rushing to save people trapped in the rubble. Ukraine's president addressing the violence, vowing to fight back in a video message to his citizens, saying, This is where life is being fought for. We thank every fighter, every soldier, every sailor, every sergeant, every officer who carry this war on their shoulders. President Biden condemning Russia's attack while urging Congress to pass a new $250 million military aid package for Ukraine and U.S. border security, adding, when dictators and autocrats are allowed to run roughshod in Europe, the risk rises that the United States gets pulled in directly. We cannot let our allies and partners down. We cannot let Ukraine down. History will judge harshly those who fail to answer freedom's call. As some senators began negotiating military funding, the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine says that there could be more Russian missile attacks over the holiday weekend. Tim Pulliam, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, so we have some breaking news just into our newsroom. There are reports of a shooting. Our Daniele Ibarra is there at the scene. This is at Victor Street, not far from North New Braunfels Avenue. Daniela, what do we know so far? Well, we know police are actively investigating. I'm going to step out of the way that way you can see them at work. But we have several officers here taking pictures of the crime scene. We that this is a robbery and that a person, a man, was shot. Uh, in the head, and he he was taken to the hospital, we're told by police, and they're out here taking pictures of different pieces of evidence out here. They have a lot of markers on the floor, and I want to point your attention to that white car right there. You can see a bullet hole is in the wind, windshield. Right now we don't know much, but we know police are out here processing all the evidence, and so now I'll send it back to you. All right, thank you very much, Daniele, about a reporting there on a shooting there at Victor and North New Braunfels Avenue. Okay, taking a look at our night beat news flash. Some wild weather here, surveillance video capturing the moment a rogue wave crashed onto a road in Ventura, California. The wave slammed several bystanders and vehicles with at least eight people that have been sent to local hospitals. It was just one of several massive waves that have damaged coastal communities across the state. Part of the California coast could see towering waves throughout the rest of this weekend. And between Americans flying back home after Christmas and others taking off, taking some time off to welcome in the new year, today was one of the busiest travel days of the year. The TSA was screening millions of passengers nationwide today, and today air traffic controllers anticipated handling around 43 
thousand flights. Compared to last year's holiday travel meltdown, the performance of U.S. airlines is significantly improved. According to data from FlightAware, carriers have canceled less than 1% of all flights over the last week. And that's your night beat news flash for the moment there. So let's talk more about New Year's Eve celebrations. They will soon be getting underway as we get ready to ring in 2024. And that means security is tight across the country, especially in the heart of New York City. Times Square transforms into the biggest party in the world every New Year's Eve. And the NYPD says that they're prepared for pretty much everything. Thousands of officers getting ready to deploy across the area. Police planning to expand their security perimeter as they look for anything out of place or suspicious people. They'll be using dogs, drones and spectator checkpoints. We know how to safeguard events of this size. Uh, we have major events going on at one time in the city and with the collaboration of all of our agencies and organizations, we get it right and we do it right all the time. All right, so there are no specific or credible threats at the moment, but federal assessment says the celebration in New York is an attractive target for foreign terrorists and homegrown extremists. The NYPD is still encouraging people to go out and enjoy themselves, but also reminding everyone that if you see something, make sure you say something. The Alamo Modo's scraps are becoming someone else's treasures. Find out why these guys are becoming so important to a local group. Welcome back. Someone else's trash turned into good use. We're talking about expired lettuce, fruits, and other food scraps that would end up in a landfill while they're being divvied up by local farmers. Christiana Wren tells our Patty Santos how her partnership with the Almodome Kitchen staff has created a movement in just a matter of months. This is trash that you're picking up. Yes, this is what people would call trash, but it is gold for the garden. Rotten tomatoes, cucumbers, and other scraps. Happy, happy worms. A gourmet feast for the thousands of red wiggler worms in Christiana Wren Rogers' backyard. They compost half their body weight every day in food waste. Wren Rogers says her worms can live anywhere from one to five years and double in size every 90 days. She keeps them happy to eat and poop. The fertilizer that comes out of this is garden gold. Much of what they eat comes from the Alamo Dome and other kitchens, up to 25 buckets of scraps each week. We started with grass clippings, uh, leaves, yeah, so much better. cardboard, all your browns, and then we started with the greens, which is the kitchen waste from the Alamo Dome. Over the summer, Kevin Arzani asked to take home spoiled or rotten leftovers and scraps from the Alamo Dome kitchen. Oh, it's a good feeling knowing that it's not wasted. Members of the San Antonio Composting Project have collected and divvied up an estimated four tons of scraps since September. We'll do about half in this one. Yes, ma'am. Are you ready now? Sure. The group is made up of backyard gardeners like Arzani and Ren Rogers. Because everything that is being processed makes your soil specifically more rich and advanced. Good soil to grow a strong garden. The black stuff are the worm castings. But they say their project is doing more than that. All of this food uh, waste would end up in our landfills. Correct. There's about 50% of what we throw away can be composted. And that affects not only the landfill capacities, but how much methane, how much carbon footprint we're using. Moving forward, the goal is to invite other food handlers to support their composting movement. I encourage backyard composting, even if you're not a gardener. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Well, that was incredibly interesting. Moral of the story, keep the worms happy. Yeah, you got right. to. Justin, we're taking a look at live camera right now. Are people going to be happy with this New Year's Eve Forecast. I think they will. Okay, I, I think like they that. will. You know, we remember years past where it's been really cold or maybe it's been rainy on New Year's Eve. That will not be the case this year. We're going to get a pretty good forecast. And as we go outside for you right now, it's uh, it's a nice evening. 43. We've got a west northwesterly wind at about seven. So yes, there is a bit of a wind chill. Feels like it's in the 30s right now. Forgotten about. Definitely jacket weather. Uh, and temperatures tomorrow morning, as we've been talking about, will be near freezing in a lot of spots. Here in San Antonio, we think down to 35, but places like Holotus, Bernie, Boulevard, you'll be right on the edge of seeing temperatures briefly touching freezing. 30 in Bandera, 32 Utopia, 32 Savin, all even out towards Hondo, Pleasanton, Gonzales, places that could all briefly touch freezing tomorrow morning. So we want to let you know about that. Forecast for tomorrow, though, 
beautiful. Yeah, we start off at 35, but look how quickly we warm up. 64 noontime. We're up close to 70 by tomorrow afternoon with sunny skies. Another beautiful day. Of course, we have to contend too with the drought conditions we're under. A drought monitor came out yesterday. We're still in an extreme drought, so some rain would be really good. We ha do have good news in the extended forecast because some rain chances do come back into play on uh, Tuesday of next week and then again on Friday of next week. Now, the dew points it's still really dry through tomorrow, but the dew points try to climb a little bit on Sunday. This does not lead to rain. This front uh, that works through and dries us back out does not bring us any rain. But it's another system Tuesday where the dew points try to come up a little bit where we will see some rain. Big picture here across the country. Unsettled weather out east. Unsettled weather out west. In the middle of the country, perfect. Uh, that's where we said we are watching some colder air starting to build to our north uh, behind a cold front. This will spill south and this comes with that cold front that we were talking about that arrives on New Year's Day. At the moment, 30s and 40s across the state. But as we look at the future cast, again, quiet weather tomorrow. Generally quiet weather on Sunday too. maybe a few more clouds. Here comes that front. Now, the one change in the forecast is that now we expect this front to arrive after midnight. So when we're ringing in the new year, It'll still be OK. I think temperatures will be in the 50s. Uh, not that cold. And then the front comes soon. It will be breezy and cooler on New Year's Day. We're expecting temperatures to drop off by about 15 degrees or so with this front, but no rain. As we said, it's not until Tuesday that we see rain chances start to return as another storm system comes in, and this will be more of a cold rain. I think we'll have a decent chance of some showers maybe even a few thunderstorms on Tuesday. And I know this is the day we head back to work and school, so not ideal timing, but we will take the rain uh, because we do desperately need it. And that'll continue into Tuesday night before tapering off Wednesday morning. So here it is laid out in the seven day forecast. 69 tomorrow, 73 Sunday. When we welcome in the new year, temperatures in the 50s eventually falling into the 40s by Monday morning, breezy and cooler on Monday. 40% chance of rain on Tuesday, cloudy skies in the 50s, Wednesday and Thursday. And then we get another shot at rain, 40% chance on Friday. So a little busier as we begin 2024, RJ. All right, yeah, 2023 going out with a bang there, keeping us guessing with the weather department. Thank you very much, Justin. Well, Nick Mantis is in tonight with sports. And Nick, the Spurs now looking to make it two wins in a row in the Row City. Yeah, RJ, that was a pretty fun win last yeah, night. Yeah, it definitely was. That Good was awesome. That. The Spurs were trying to see if they could do that again tonight against the Trailblazers. Only one problem. They're going to do it without Wendy, who's getting some rest. We're going to get you update you on that game and get you prepared for the Cowboys matchup against the best team in the NFC North, the Detroit Lions. So stay with us. Well, after last night's 13-point win over the Portland Trail Blazers, the San Antonio Spurs are resting Victor Wembanyama tonight. I mean, he did score 30 points in 24 minutes. And the big man stepping up in his spot, Zach Collins off the glass with the contact. He's leading the team with 15 points right now, but leading the team in style points as Malachi Branham with the left-handed slam. Now, since this game is still in progress, let's check in on the score. The Trail Blazers pulled away just before halftime, 71 to 56 at the break. Portland's Jeremy Grant already has 20 points and five rebounds. We'll make sure to keep you updated online as this game goes final. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. How about them Cowboys? Start getting back to their winning ways. Dallas has lost two straight games and it's not getting any easier from here on in. Tomorrow night, the Cowboys will welcome the newly crowned Kings of the Jungle that is the NFC North. The Detroit Lions will look to get their 12th win of the season for the first time since 1991. And members of the Cowboys defense will look to shut down the third best offense in the NFL. Guys on both sides of the ball gave their take on what to look out for when taking on the Lions. Yeah, they have a pretty good pass rush. Uh, they have a lot of playmakers on their defense, a lot of speed. Uh, and so we just have to, like I said, play our play our standard of ball and focus on us. And then obviously uh, it'll take care of itself. We uh, just go out there and make the plays that we know we can make and continue and to, to grow together as this offense uh, moves forward going into this run we're about to have. I think it's a run game. You know, they, they, they blocking pretty good. Um, they getting a lot of yards in the run game and then they play action pass. They get you coming up and they throw it over top. So um, 
That's what they're good at. And Jerry Goff been in the league for a while. He's seen a lot of football and he's playing well. Again, kickoff is tomorrow night at 7.15 p.m. And you don't even have to change the channel. It's going to be right here on KSAT. We're going to have the live updates throughout the day from Arlington, plus a post-game report from Mary Rominger. In college football, UTSA saw another roadrunner announce that he's looking for another opportunity. After, after just being named the Scooter Coffee Frisco Bowl defensive MVP, Cam Alexander announced yesterday that he's entering the transfer portal. In his one year at UTSA, Cam was a first team all ACC selection and has one year left of eligibility. And also yesterday, Judson alum Rashad Wisdom announced that he's heading to the NFL draft. After suffering an arm injury during the Frisco Bowl, he was ruled out for the rest of the game. But we caught up with him after the Roadrunners won as he reflected on the game and his time as a Roadrunner. I'm happy with the way the guys play, man. And I'm just glad we was able to go get our first bowl win, man. I feel like, you know, this just kind of as the cherry on top, if you you know were to say, um, you know, I mean, I feel like we're legendary. This is something that can't be re rewritten. And, you know, like I said, just happy at the way that we were able to go play and finish off the game. The most entertaining game of the day came from the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Clemson taking on Kentucky and the Cats taking a big shot in the fourth quarter. A 60 yard touchdown pass from Darren Leary to Darion Brown to retake the lead. After a Clemson field goal, Kentucky, Kentucky hands it off to Ray Davis right back in front again. But the Tigers would get the last laugh, bashing his way through for the game winning touchdown is Phil Maffa as Clemson caps off a nine win season with with a 38 to 35 win in the Gator Bowl. The night beat returns right after the break. Welcome back everyone. I know we're in the middle of bowl game media and the NFL postseason is upon us, but if you haven't been taking a look at what's going on in hoops up in Austin, it's about time you did. The 21st ranked Texas Longhorns were taking on the Spartans of UNC Greensboro tonight. And even in this mismatch, the Longhorns effort was at another level. How about Dylan Mitchell coming down with a slam on the alley-oop? Then check out this move. Oh, see you later. Tyrese Hunter putting on the two of his season high 23 points in the second half. How about some more big buckets? Dylan DeSue, yeah. Nothing but nylon as the Longhorns would go on to win it 72 to 37. RJ, they are having one heck of a season already. Yeah, and I love this time of the year, Nick, because we're kind of wrapping football up, but basketball is now starting to heat up. Right. Some conference play coming up. Also, of course, NBA. So we know you guys are staying on top of it all. We are so busy and it's yeah, so much fun. That's good. <laughs> Got to keep you busy. Man. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys, we'll be right back.